Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. There he is. Hey, TC. Thanks for having me. Very welcome, as always. And we are here to talk about Italy versus England this afternoon, the middle game of this weekend. And I just want to kick off by saying I absolutely love this game. I've been somewhat underwhelmed and dispirited by England performances for God, quite a few years now. But I just loved the way they went about this game. What were your thoughts, Salka? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I was I was equally delighted because I thought Italy were 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 good. Um, and I'm I'm look. We want them to be good. The 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 sport wants them to be good. We want games to be competitive. And uh, you know, England won by three points. That's that's competitive. Hundred percent. It was two teams that both wanted to attack with aggression and and pace and lots of variation and two defences that also wanted to defend with quite a lot of pressure and aggressiveness as well. So it was a real kind of battle royale and it was it was quite dramatic for lots of times, especially during that first half. Yeah, yeah, it was clear there was, uh, you could tell that it was two teams that had uh, new stuff to work on. Um, uh, England clearly, and we'll get into it, was the the, the new defensive si system that Jones has brought in from from South Africa, and you can clearly see uh, one hundred percent snapshots of that Springbok rush uh, defense. And then you had um, uh, Casadas; uh, you could see his DNA one hundred percent on it. Uh, they were way more pragmatic. Um, and they did things that I haven't seen them do before in terms of switching from different sides. Uh, that was clear in the first half, and and Jesus, they took their they took the chances and scored them um, some beauties, absolute beauty tries. Yeah, that's a real nice point you picked up on there. A way to avoid that massive rush defence is to go down the blind side, and they did it several times in that first half. I think one time they caught Itoji offside, but they made ground every time. So that was a real sort of nice tactical point. Yeah, yeah, and kind of late changes, kind of. Um, I could almost see him playing ten. Weirdly, I was like, oh yeah, kind of. I, I sort of. He's, he's obviously had had quite a, a a big impact in a short amount of time. Um, but yeah, they look they looked a lot better than they have they have done. Um, still, lots of naysayers on on the socials uh, complaining and blah blah blah. But I, I think I think it was a good game of rugby, and um, actually, I would have loved to have been there for that for that for that game. Yeah, one of the one of the things I want to pick up on England's defence, very relatively narrow and super aggressive, so aggressive. And I just wonder whether the Slade selection was really based around the fact that Exeter have been defending like that from the start of this season. So he's been really used to being that, you know, that what's it called, like the pincer man flying up out of the line. So I wonder whether they saw him having all that experience of doing it this season and thought. If we're going to play that defensive system, he's definitely the man. <clears throat> yeah, it, very good point. I mean, he certainly seemed to be the player that was most comfortable with it. Although I'd say, I, I would say that the South African stroke now England, it, it's way more aggressive than what X are doing. I mean, it's it is wild. It is go and sprint as hard as you can. And De Elliot Daly got caught a few times where he didn't follow in, and, and they scored off at least once. Um, but I don't know if you saw uh, Brett Igo, who we're, who we're a big fan of um, on on X, uh, who's a statistician and, and uh, ex coach for Leinster in Scotland. Um, he 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 was taking screenshots and going, look at this, look at the thing, and he and he was showing where where the where the space was, and there is huge amounts of space. But same with South Africa, always in behind. Now, for me, what England, it, it's clear it's new, so they're getting used to it. My fear is I don't think they've got. It's going to be really harsh. I don't think they've got the personnel at the moment to defend like they want to defend. I don't think they've got the athletes. They do not have people like the South African backline where they are, they're big men and they're fast and they've been doing this thing for ages. Um, and they're also ball players, but they're really good. But then that secondary thing, I and mean, you saw, you saw when they broke through Joe Marler trying to get across on the scramble. If you remember with South Africa, when they get broken, their scramble defense is incredible. They really work back, but you have to learn that. That doesn't happen. If you're not used to doing that defense, it won't happen. So I think it's a good start. Um, the, I think the problem they may have is that uh, all the other teams now have got a kind of idea of what they're going to do. 
And uh, that's going to be really interesting and how, how they're going to pick apart. We know Ireland can pick apart that defence because they did with, with um, South Africa. But I like it. I, I think it's awesome. I think, and if they can pick the right players or the players they have can get into that, that, that will suit an England team where it's really aggressive. They get lots of turnover in people's faces. Farrell would have loved it, ironically, but anyway, that's that's old news. Um, so that was that was that was really cool. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see what 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 they'll do going forward because they'll only get better. You know, they'll only get better. Hundred percent. Now, just the game in general. It was a beautiful day there in Rome. Dry. Uh, looked like it was quite warm as well, and that was reflected in that first half. The amazing first half. There was only one scrum in that first half, and it was right towards the end. Um, both teams very happy to play a lot of rugby through the middle third, which England initially had some problems with. They're, they were a little bit missing of detail in their first clearer. They lost a couple of, uh, like, one turnover and one penalty at the ruck. But they soon tidied that up and got back on track and played some lovely stuff in that first half. I was really impressed with the amount of layers they had in their attack and also the depth they had. They had really big depth. And with Italy playing a product, Aggressive defence as well. England just had the ability then to pick people off. Yeah, it, it seemed better, didn't it? it? It seemed like there was more going on. I, I still think they kicked a bit too much. Uh, and I don't think they they went with advantage when they had us and they kind of kicked the ball away. They weren't, they weren't as ruthless maybe as they, they could have been. But again, look, it's going to come. Um, it's definitely new. Definitely more intensity. They definitely more layers. My only concern was I, I felt that maybe on second or th- no, on third or fourth phase, which is great because that's what we want. We want them going through phases. We don't want them kicking. I felt that Ford or whoever was the main ball carrier would then pass the ball across. And it, it ended up being someone like Joe Marler getting the ball. And I just think that details, they need to move on to that next bit. He, he, I don't want him getting the ball. We need someone else getting the ball. Um, unless he's doing a pullback, whatever. But, it, it it definitely better, definitely more layers. But I just think they're because they haven't been playing that way, and they haven't. I think that will come, and they, the 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 development will be really interesting to watch. It's quite exciting actually, because I think I think there is green shoots there to go. They are starting to play. Um, uh, still a bit too more too much kicking for my liking. But anyway, um, definitely sorry. And then um, with with some of the backs they have the. the what really stood out to me was the was it the first try that um, Elliot Daly scored um, in the left hand side, I think, for England. Um, I cannot remember the last time I saw the two English wingers together that had worked around and winger to winger and score, and that's that's good because you got your two fastest ball players and and they've done something to work around, and that's exciting, and that's I think that's what we want as fans to see those uh, English wingers scoring tries. And the other detail of that try, which I really loved, which I don't think I've seen before as well, was it was Freddie Stewart who gave the ball to Freeman, right? So we've seen Stewart hitting lines, cutting angles, but generally ending up being the ball carrier, not a link player. So to see him sort of add that to his game, and it was a brilliant line from Freeman. He was was sort of drifting out, and then he hit it short to go through the hole. But for Stewart to be able to hit him with that accuracy, I loved that. And I thought that was a real sort of step forward in his game. Oh, I'm sorry. F- Freeman was really good. I think he's a he's a good player. He's a he's a big kid. Um, he he got his uh, he's got his pants pulled down as well. Did you did you see that? Tommy the, Freebum. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Freebum. Yeah. The uh, the commentary here on on ITV was so funny. But I can't remember what they said. Oh, we we saw his true qualities. <laughs> <laughs> Delaglio lost that he couldn't speak for about two minutes. <laughs> Um, he, yeah, and he, he nearly, nearly scored then as well. He did, yeah, <laughs> he did. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a great first half. I mean, I honestly thought the players looked like they were a little bit out on their feet getting towards the end of it, you know? <clears throat> I think it was warm, warmer than they've been used to, certainly, and the pace of the game was frenetic with people making l- breaks, but some big breaks as well. So there's a, they probably ran a lot of metres in that first half. I was a little bit concerned at half-time that... Um, Well, it wasn't a concern, but I thought fatigue would play a role in the second half. And it did, really, I think, because the second half was a lot more stop-start. There were a lot more errors. I don't know how many scrums there were in the second half, but there were quite a lot. Um, And the game kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit, but there was still this real tension because it was pretty much always a one-score game. Yeah, Italy never never went away. 
when England went, into, went ahead. Um, it's interesting you say about the fatigue because I, I was worried, and, I, and this is a problem for England going forward, I feel, is, well, so Marler stayed on. I understand that because Genji um, slipped in the bath or... Um, <laughs> Uh, or or whatever who knows we'll, I'm sure we'll find out um <laughs> so so uh Marla, I think I think that was a they kind of maybe were a bit worried because Ivano hadn't maybe been involved as much in the week I, I, who knows um but but George is staying on and, and obviously he's captain and and it's interesting because n- not many hookers go that that long at all in in, in the international game and that might be something that they need to look at. Uh, not that, not that it would have made. Well, it was a tight game, but I think when you're talking about really colossal tight and and it all comes down to those tiny little percents that you know. Um, and and Dan was excellent when he came on. I thought he was, he was really. I like him as a as a player. But yeah, there there, there definitely seems to be a bit of a bit of fatigue there. Um, and that's with, you know, uh, maybe okay, maybe they were looking at the scrum count, and that was why they were able to keep those boys on a bit longer um i don't know but uh it was something i think they may, may need to look at uh, and who would who would be captain if jamie george came off then i don't know how they'd do they it's have OG a vice took, captain it, it's oji took over by the end yeah. yeah he wasn't he was quiet wasn't he yeah relatively today he won one really yeah. good turnover um but otherwise was fairly quiet yeah yeah um but in the second half england continued with their defence. I felt like I got a little bit more connected in the second half and they put Italy under a huge amount of pressure. So the, Italy looked good in the attack in the first half and they picked England off when England were over-aggressive in certain situations for the Alessandro Garbisi try, um, where I think it was Canoni got put through the middle. Um, and then they picked England off when they were shorthanded as well down the right-hand side. Tommy Allen getting two touches of the ball to end up scoring. It was just a beautiful try. I love the way Italy play like that. But second half, England's defence became suffocating and it just created mayhem. And they took metres and metres off Italy and forced a ton of errors. Yeah, I think I think Jones had a word at half-time. I, 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 I'd imagine it was something like, just back the system. Just get the detail right. Don't th- stop thinking about whether you should or shouldn't. If your inside guy's going, just go. Because Daly got caught a few times on on, on Alan's try, I think. Um, and they 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 looked, yeah, they, they looked more uh, bought into what they were doing. They more aggressive, quicker coming up and together, uh, and very much connected. And that made a huge difference. And Italy struggled to to, to as any team would 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 uh, deal with that. I thought the centres for. Um, Italy were, were really good. Um, uh, you know, big lads, really yeah. big guys, but can play and have a, have a bit about them as well. Um, and uh, you know, we're, England aren't as big as they have been traditionally. Uh, I mean, Dingwall's a fairly large chap, but he's he's not. You know, he's not too laggy. So um, yeah, it's it, it's um, they they were really good. I, I I liked watching them. I think I think they've got a they'll go well for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. Another thing about the front row, which we uh, we both love, was the debut for Mirko Spagnolo, the tiny Spaniard, um, who came on and first scrum really good. won a penalty really good. against Dan Cole on an England scrum. I mean, He's... That, that is how you start an international career as a prop. Yeah. Fair play to him. He almost couldn't, like, he was trying to hide a grin, I think, or some kind of yeah. smirk. He didn't know he what to do. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be delighted, wouldn't you? Absolutely yeah. delighted. I think he was quite shocked. How how he's he's only is he twenty twenty one? I'm not sure of the age, but he's, I he's think he played twenties last year. Yeah, he's but he looks he looks young, right? Um, Dan Cole must be like, oh god, there's another 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 young <laughs> Kino. Um, but yeah, he was he was good. I like I like him a lot, and there's definitely like we we both felt that the World Cup, and and I guess that's why we were really harsh on Italy. We were so disappointed because. We know that it, 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 you can't be in the Six Nations for this long and plough in all this investment in time and money and bringing in expertise from all over the world and not ha- and also have, you know, the most passionate, brilliant p- people, culture, and not be knocking on the door of being good. And that's why we were, I think we were quite harsh and annoyed with their performances in 
maybe it was um, their New Zealand coach that that messed it all up. Um, I don't know, but they they definitely look like there's you can build on that performance today, no doubt. Hundred percent. And just in terms of swings of momentum in the second half, I think there were a couple of key goal kicking moments where Allen missed a penalty when it was a seven point yeah. game. And then England went up the other end and pretty much kicked one themselves within three or four minutes, which then made it 10 points. And it just meant the final 10 minutes of the game. I mean, it wasn't just played out, but it was relatively comfortable for England. They knew they've got a barrier, a buffer there. Um, yeah, which meant, obviously, scores. when Ioani went over in the last minute uh, to score, it was a brilliant finish. Fair play to What? Uh, what a try. <laughs> yeah, but it meant England, you know, they knew they were kind of safe at that point. Yeah. I'm not saying they deliberately fell off a tackle or anything like that, but those key points in the game really make a difference. Um, and Italy ended up outscoring England three tries to two. So That's right. there's, a, yeah. there's, a big thing, there's a big thing there for them as well. I think this was a promising performance from Italy. And as you say, something very much to build on for sure. Yeah, and they're well worked tries, all of them. Um, yeah, yeah I only try the end was he was... I'd love to know what his lactate measurement was at the end of that. But he looked absolutely done. Didn't want to play anymore. Just, you know, thank, thankfully, it was the, the final whistle. Um, uh, mentioned for back row players for England, I thought Roots, and obviously he got man of the match, was exceptional. Um, I wasn't, I haven't seen a lot of them, um, but I was very impressed. Very, very workmanlike. Very, you know, kept, kept kind of took the shine off Underhill in a way because uh, normally he's the workman. He was really good as well. He did lots of stuff that, you know, um, none of the flair stuff, just hitting rooks and, and tackles. And But he had a lot of ball carries routes. And then uh, cutting himself out when he came on, I thought looked looked like he should be playing international uh, rugby. My only, um, the only thing I was annoyed with was, um, um, what's our guy's name? Is it, uh, is it Femi Waboso? Or Femi Faye Waboso. Femi Waboso. Oh, I've said this, like, I've said this on uh, our bloody pre pre match thing why are they bringing him on with 3 minutes to go i mean it just what is the point of that it's just ridiculous give him at least 10 come on especially with, especially when it was a 10 point ball game as well right that's kind of one of the things that you know having that little gap that lead uh, is a good reason for doing it. it 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 doesn't make sense and he came on did he come on for um uh free bum yeah he did uh, and he was he he'd had a knock and he'd a he'd a big shiner. I mean, take take him off and bring the kid on and see what he can see what he can do. Three minutes. I mean, you know, it's probably because I'm having nightmares because that, that's basically what my career was was about <laughs> three two minutes two minutes off the bench, uh, two crooked ins and probably lost a scrum and then that was the end of the game. <laughs> in fairness, in three minutes he made one really good tackle and had a really he strong did. carry. Really strong carry as well. So, like he yeah. did, he did well in the three minutes that he had. Um, yeah, and then they, last they 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 had a they had a backline move where he was like stood behind the scrum, and I was like, oh, here we go, Ben Smith's <laughs> going to do something magical, and then uh, when I got <laughs> penalised at the scrum, I was like, oh, for God's sake, really <laughs> international rugby hate. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Mentioned there for Finn Smith debut as well, um, and I thought he looked really good when he came on. Actually, Com- really, really sort of competent, which is how I describe it. It sounds like um, damning him with faint praise, but it's really not meant to be like that. I just think he looks so <coughs> good at everything um, that he just he's just a fantastic player, and he looked he looked very, very at home in international rugby. Yeah, um, I think he should have started. I, I... I think even more he should have started. Um, I don't think Ford is the type of athlete that can do that rush defence. <laughs> there was <laughs> there was one bit where he he literally dived out of somebody's way. He was down the bottom left hand corner. I was like, really? Now he's not in. Yeah, he's not in the squad to do that, and I get that. But I just think this kid's got something about him, and he's. I I would have liked to see him start, and I think he'll. Well, let's see where where um, Marcus is um, from next week on. I think he's going to be okay from next week, but um, I don't know. I think they might miss an opportunity maybe to to start him. We'll we'll see. Ford, I like I like Ford. He wasn't, um, you know, like uh, <laughs> in the first half. It was like, oh, 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 Italy are up, and it's like it was ten nil, I think, and oh, and then and then it's like, oh no, England get a penalty in kind of in front of the post, 
and it's all right. Their their well polished ten stands up to kick the ball, and this will settle them down. And he kicked it. Got a, it bounced off the post. It was like a big banana. And I went, oh, that's not going to settle the nerves at all. <laughs> he was all over it. But anyway, he's still he's still awesome. I'm being harsh. I'm being harsh. Yeah, I thought Ford overall had a really good game. Um, but most of all, I'm just excited that England are looking like they really want to play some rugby this year and challenge themselves to go to another level. So thank you, Jamie George. That's all you've been speaking about since you took the captaincy. And as far as I'm concerned, today you absolutely delivered. And I personally loved it. And I can't wait to see England play again next weekend. And I'll say the same for Italy, because I loved watching them play last year. And I love watching them play again today. I thought it was a brilliant game. And it's what I want to see in international rugby. Yeah, I think it's I think it's, it's awesome, and um, what better challenge than than facing Ireland in in Dublin for the next week? Let's let's see if they can they can crack on. And um, who have England got? Um, just the French, is it? Um, hmm, should be should be a bit of fun. Let's let's see what happens. But uh, I think I think I think for a starter for ten, that was a it was a it was a good spectacle. Um, we've seen some we've seen some car crashes in Rome, right? That was that was a good game of rugby and fair play to both teams. Yeah, that's what we think, people at home. What do you think? Any key people we've missed out? Anybody that you think had a really good game that we didn't mention or vice versa? Let us know in the comments down below and we will join you there for a conversation. Hit the thumbs up button while you're down there if you don't mind and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the rest of this content throughout this Six Nations and beyond. This leads me to say, Elko, thank you so much again for your time and incredible insight. <laughs> Thanks, DT. The beer helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. You can subscribe there. Watch that one next. There, there. And uh, don't forget to get out and play. <laughs>